Dream Academy, Hybe's latest audition show for a girl group, has barely any viewership with many of its videos struggling to go past 750,000 views. For context, Are You Next, also a Hybe production and also considered to have not performed so well in viewership, had many of its videos past the 1 million mark within the first week. Dream Academy should have a global audience with contestants representing different countries. The girls aren't short in talent. The vocal line hits and the dance line is on point. So, people are wondering how come they aren't getting the viewership you could expect of Geffen's influence and their power in the US. Did Geffen and Hybe absolutely miss how they decided to market and promote this show and by extension this group? They are following the fashion style and makeup of K-pop rather than that of the West. They are made to look like girls rather than women which is what you would expect of Western groups. Or is the world simply expecting K-pop to be Asian and there's a disconnect when non-Asian artists start doing K-pop music? Or maybe it's the actual format of the show? No other talent show has done it this way. Maybe there's something about seeing the drama and the personalities of the contestants and the brutality of the judges that hook the audience. And without any of that, people find no reason to watch it. Hi! If you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, uh, subscribe and hit that notification button so that you know when there's a new video coming out. Especially though, please share the video because it's really helping my channel. Okay, this one is a request. There's so many of you who sent me a request asking that I do like a, a deep dive on the marketing strategy or whatever is happening with the show. I just wanted to make it clear that I don't think there's anything wrong with the girls. They are all so talented. I think they should all <laughs> debut and just be given a chance to show what they can really do. Another thing is that there's a lot of things we don't know. They're launching a brand, an artist, so that requires pl uh, planning the brand, doing a business plan, and then creating a corresponding marketing strategy that will allow them to achieve their goals. So usually that goes in stages so it's not like just throwing everything on the wall and see what's going to stick so we don't know what kind of marketing plan that they have and what stage they are in next is that we don't know if there are any other objectives may of course they want to launch a global girl group but we don't know if they a part of the objective is to learn about the market to experiment with different show formats or to test new strategies so they're doing it in a small scale first and then large scale there is also the fact that it's too early in the career of the girls and the show for us to say it's a failure. So it's unfair. Uh, that being said, I think it's always helpful if you, want, if you want to analyze things. For as long as we know our limitations, we know the things that we don't know and that we're doing it just because we want to grow personally, especially if in the future you want to pursue a career in entertainment or marketing and advertising. I think it is helpful if we exercise our analytical skills. Okay, now on with the video. It seems there's no production or marketing budget. It seems to be so small scale, utilizing only YouTube and Weavers. When launching a product or brand or a campaign, there is usually a preliminary stage. This goes by different names. Some call it pre-launch, some call it awareness stage, product development, and many others. Allegedly, there will be a Netflix special about the group's journey from initial casting to debut. So maybe this audition show is only considered the teaser. In other words, Geffen and Hybe may never have meant to make this the main pre-debut marketing material, but only a vehicle to test how the market will respond to the members and which one will garner the most support. And in marketing, testing something like this is always best done in a controlled environment a controlled market, also known as a sample, instead of rolling it out to the whole target market. The other thing that we need to consider is that maybe they are trying to make sure that they know everything about the contestants. Remember, this is supposed to be a global group. That means they have to be concerned about global sensitivities, global issues, and global culture. If they find out something about one of the contestants that could get them canceled, it's easier to fix it in a controlled environment. 
thus the choice to go small scale. Is there something wrong with the show's format? The challenges look so boring and soulless. Since the earliest talent shows, there is one important element in these shows that have nothing to do with their talent, the contestants' personal stories. Try and observe, even in shows that claim to only look at the talent, like The Voice, for example, they still highlight the personal stories of the contestants after the initial audition. The other thing is that in many of these audition shows, there are pre-interviews. Producers of the shows actually talk to those who are auditioning and then they pick and choose whose stories they are going to highlight. Sometimes, those that they actually interview and those whose stories actually get on TV don't necessarily make it to the final lineup. Dream Academy seems to have completely broken away from this format with almost no effort to talk about the personal backgrounds of the contestants. In an ideal world, this is what is supposed to be about. Talent, who cares about where they came from? But our world is not ideal, and the general public wants more than singing. They want you to make them love the artists on a personal level. Given that fans are most likely not going to gain anything tangible from supporting these artists, the only thing you can offer them is the emotional ride. But maybe, just maybe, even this is calculated. Maybe there is a reason Hybe and Geffen decided to detach the contestants from the viewers and only flaunt their talents. It would be close to impossible for no one in Geffen or Hybe to realize that this format isn't that entertaining. This leads me to believe that there is a reason they decided to do it this way. The videos of the challenges could have been shot with an iPhone in a 65 per hour studio. The videos are boring and the girls lack the K-pop fashion glitz. Suga of BTS said it best, K-pop isn't just about the music only anymore. It's a culture. It involves fashion, the stages, the promotion, the music videos, and even the personalities of the artists. Their challenges were shot against an empty background, at least most of them. Their fashion style and the makeup are very subdued compared to your typical K-pop style. They have good lighting though. My initial thought is that they wanted to highlight the artist. With nothing else to look at, your attention will go on the only thing you can see, the artist. So again, this may be a calculated move. They are moving away from the typical K-pop look and feel. The problem is that you need a talent big enough to command the empty space, and the talents of the girls are still very raw. This is actually my personal struggle when I watched some of the episodes. They are all talented, but they are talented in a raw kind of way. So, I they, for me, this is just for me, they aren't yet enough to carry the stage or to command the stage or to carry an entire show. So with a sea of talented artists online, for me, I would rather watch those talented artists and then just, you know, maybe in the future, I will watch them, but not yet. So I guess this is part of the reason a lot of shows actually would, fe would feature the personal stories of the contestants or they would put in interesting judges like Simon Cowell because they need something that would hook the audience. Given that the artists are still getting incubated, they're still getting trained, then they use something else to get the audience involved in the show. In the absence of a good story, a Simon Cowell could take its place, but the judges are also boring. The judges have no rapport. They're too formal, too stiff, too polite, and too nugu. One of the things that made American Idol a huge hit was Simon Cowell. Cowell was the best and the biggest marketing piece of the American Idol the show. He was the a-hole everybody loved to hate, but all the contestants wanted to please. The judges in Dream Academy are too formal, too polite, they're very nice. It is of course understandable that they may want to put real executives in the show. Uh, change of approach from other shows, but they don't have the entertaining personality that could hook the audience. This may also be cultural in nature. Americans are naturally very, very polite.
The girls are talented and they are performing songs already popular, but they're still not getting the attention. Maybe the global market is not ready for K-pop as a genre and as a culture. One of the loudest but disliked narratives out there is that K-pop isn't actually that popular in the mainstream. If you look at the real numbers and the charts, there really isn't anyone that has been consistent in other markets outside of BTS. Just to be clear, others have registered good numbers already, but no one has established the kind of consistency that will solidify their status. Creating a show like Dream Academy with contestants coming from different countries highlights the disconnect between the genre and the culture and what the artist looks like. The easiest way to think about it is when someone from a different country dances and dresses up and sings like you do. They may look good in it and they may be doing your dances and your songs some justice, but it won't look natural. This is why marketers actually study market biases and yes, even stereotypes. Much as we all desire for all these biases to be gone, our brain develops these biases unconsciously as we experience things. There have been marketing campaigns that seem to go against the trend, like Apple's Be Different commercials. That's one successful campaign. But if you really look into it, they still cater to a certain bias or a certain stereotype. The market that wants to be different, that wants to be rebellious. Many say it's a fetish, the Asian fetish, that makes it acceptable to the global market when Asians are the ones doing K-pop. When others are doing it, it looks awkward, wrong, and even misplaced. That theory will most likely remain a theory until someone conducts a study to prove or disprove it. The brand is simply not clear. Is it global pop or K-pop that is global? Lastly, the branding is really not clear. Is this a global pop group or a K-pop group that is global? A global pop group would be somebody like Destiny's Child, TLC, or Spice Girls. But the contestants are, are made up and styled to look like girls more than women so that resonates a little bit more towards the k-pop brand but then they are obviously singing and, and talking in english for the most part and really when creating a brand the worst one that you can create is the one that is not clear because then you will not end up attracting the right kind of market actually you may not end up creating any kind of market at all so the the best brands are really the ones that are very clear they're extreme they make their stance very clear their principles their objectives very clear that's the one that people latch on to um so right now the market not understanding the kind of music or the kind of branding that they're going to have is really deterring uh the market from from getting attached to the contestants into the show but then again, maybe it is calculated. Maybe the goal is to really create something new, um, a new sound, a new style that we haven't seen before. So let's see. I would love to hear your thoughts, though, not just about the Dream Academy, but just a, all of this audition shows, all of this talent shows. There's so many of them left and right. So I would love to know how you feel about it. And a lot of them are actually for women, for girl groups. Um, leave them in the comment section below. As always, you know me. You can always say what you want to say. Just do it respectfully. You can also get in touch with me in any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now. Um, you, But most especially, please uh, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button and share the video if you can. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Till next time.